back to Entertainment Tonight as we look at the Jacksons exposed. The 1980s will be remembered as the decade Michael became the king of pop. With hit after hit, the moonwalk, we are the world, it was Michael's decade to shine. He was constantly on the road and E.T. was with him every step of the way. His hopes for true love. To find the right person and to go off somewhere for a lifetime, be happy married, I guess. His enduring loneliness. When I'm not on stage, I'm not as happy, and everything seems to be foreign to me or new. And I'm just now beginning to enjoy friendship, which is new for me. His dreams for the future. I want to entertain people. Uh, bring some type of joy, escapism, magic to the world. And uh, I feel that's what I'm here to do. Uh, I'm honored to have the job. In the 80s, fans hung on Michael's every whispered word because he enjoyed staggering success. Thriller, released in 1982, became the best-selling album of all time, with 51 million copies sold around the world. Pepsi paid him then an unheard of $10 million for his endorsement. I wanted something that the whole world could see. With We Are the World in 1985, Jackson won a Grammy and earned humanitarian status. Does good work, what we call the points of light concept. 1987's Bad, with its record-breaking world tour, sold nearly 7 million copies within one week of its worldwide release. Sorry, I gotta take five minutes. Mary? Mary. During this whirlwind, he always had time for E.T. as Mary Hart literally held his hand backstage, calming him. I think it's got to be one of the most incredible feelings in the world. To know it's your show and just to feel there's a whole excitement and frenzy about it. Mary even joined the Jackson pre-concert prayer circle, which evolved into a good old-fashioned yell. These adoring fans never saw what our ET cameras captured. Just be there, be there, be there. We shadowed Michael as he created his massive hit, Beat It. Jackson gave us unprecedented access to the filming and editing sessions. Much of the time, he seems disinterested, even reading the newspaper. But he is aware of each split-second sound, and he personally okays barely perceived background sound effects. I still need some yells once they jump. Clearly at the top of his career, Michael still seemed discontented. Eventually, I want to do uh, film. That's what uh, my dream is to do, film, as well as uh, song, to integrate them together. Realism, realism, nothing is plastic, real, feeling and belief, that's what I understand. Bring the world together through love, peace, joy, uh, for man to live together, it's the whole thing. Before the shroud of secrecy enveloped him, Michael lived a sometimes open public life. When the play Dream Girls premiered in Los Angeles, he gave E.T. his review. It's the most incredible play I've ever seen. It's brilliant. Everybody should see it. But for Michael Jackson in the 80s, there was a growing sense of how isolated his life had always been. I was raised on stage. I'm happy on stage. I can sleep on stage. When I'm off, it's another story. Uh, it's hard to relate to people in everyday life. I'm comfortable on stage in front of thousands of people. That love of performing took Michael around the globe. For 1987's Bad World Tour, he even brought along one of his most talked about companions, Bubbles the Chimp. He was becoming a true legend, and other stars sought him out. Billy Joel and Christy Brinkley brought their daughter Alexa to a sound check and visited backstage. It's Michael, all right. But she can't believe it. But there was no denying Michael was gaining his reputation as an eccentric. Quincy Jones, who produced both Thriller and Bad, defended his friend against charges that he was out of touch with the real world. 
Many times he puts on disguises, you know, and goes out every he goes out everywhere. People don't even know he's there. You know, my, I know my daughter. They take little adventures and they could run away from all the bodyguards and they go off and do their thing. The Beverly Center, everybody freaks out, you know, and they're having a ball over there, just looking at some little stupid toys or somewhere. Same when we shot the bad video, you know, we went up in on even twenty second street, you know, for hours and hours and hours, you know, and sneak off and go to these little restaurants and he's he's connected. Quincy even had kind words for bubbles. He's like a person because he's real playful and he's, he loves to get in trouble. He's mischievous, you know. He's like, a, he's, he's wild. I mean, he eats out of a spoon just like a person that doesn't mess up his lips. A real personality. Michael, how do you like your Australian fans? Oh, get out. I love them. 1987's fan tour lasted well into 1988 and Michael's joy was apparent. E.T. saw him play fighting with his manager and high-fiving his band. He even gave then-unknown Cheryl Crow a few moments in the spotlight. Plus, she gets to hug Michael. That's right. But slowly, Michael began his retreat into the shadows. His public appearances became shorter and shorter. When L.A. named November of 88 as Michael Jackson month, he barely said a word. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And eventually, the man who blazed through the decade became a camera-shy recluse who seemed to repeat the same speech nearly every time he spoke in public. Thank you very much. Um... Very honored, very thankful. I love you all. Thank you. Coming up next, Michael in Trouble. So Behind the scenes on the music video where Michael was labeled as an anti Semite. I love Jewish people. The accusations, the controversy, the shame. They served a search warrant on me, which allowed them to view and photograph my body. Then, almost 30 years before her Super Bowl shocker, take a look at this Janet Jackson performance. As Entertainment Tonight examines the Jacksons Expo.